In today's episode of the Journey HQ, we're going to be taking Krusty to Ram Auto Sound, our good buddy shop, and he's going to be installing a full stereo system in it. And the customer that bought this truck did not want a big box behind the seat, but wanted good sound. So we went with a compact, economical subwoofer that fits underneath the seat, a little bit oversized speakers in the dash, and some 6 by 9s It's going to sound great. Y'all come check it out. Stay tuned. This is Robert right behind me. Robert is the owner of Ram. How long you own this? How long you own this place? Since 1994, when I started. Long time. 18 years old. 18 years old, you started Rams? Yeah. Dang, that's awesome. So yeah, how that work out? I'm only 28 now. <laughs> He's 28, guys. Yeah. But anyways, they do, you can see they've got all this printing equipment. They make signs. They make all my signs for my uh, vapor shops and my other businesses. They've wrapped, they've wrapped two trucks of mine. We have. Wrapped the Scion That's right. and the uh, Total Exterior Clean well, Truck. Work for you a long time. Yeah, yeah, for a while. Yeah. And so, uh, but we're about to get the stereo put in on Krusty. We got it back here. We got to get our tools together for this install. All the tools? You getting all your tools ready? Mm -hmm. Dang, count. how many tools does it take to install a stereo? All of them. So where do we start? I don't know. Let's not use those on this truck, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're about to uh, go over all. We got all of the tools laid out. He's getting it all ready, ready prepped, so he can have a fast install. It matters that you have all your tools. But we're going to go over all the stereo system that we've got here picked out. We picked this out yeah. quite a while ago, but we're just now installing it. Let's do it now. We're going with a, you know, a classic truck that's only gonna fit so much. Customer requests don't take up a lot of space, make it stealthy, so that's why we chose this stuff. It is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because like I said, we're gonna try to do a little oversized speaker in that dash. Get a little bit more volume. A little more volume, plus that's what we had in stock. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of room in the back of these uh, C10s. No. What did we go with on the, on the subwoofer for this vehicle? So we used a low profile, it's a new one by Pioneer. It's got like a five by eight inch, uh, Cone, it's self-powered and it's tiny basically that's it that's the whole subwoofer that's amp, amplifier everything. enclosure everything dang that is small is it going to beat the street no is it no. going to sound good in that truck <laughs> yeah absolutely we chose a uh, single den chassis because of the limitations of the truck could it be modified to put a larger yeah but this is going to give you basically all the features of one of the new double den radios but app control whether you use your phone a separate tablet Gives you lots of options to mount and disguise. You know, we use this a lot, whether it's exposed, sometimes we'll hide it in classic cars so you can access everything just from a remote. Most people want the big screen where you can touch everything, do all your maps. That right there is just set your phone in there and that's your screen. And instead of spending $150 on this, you can take and go up to $1,000 on getting, you know, a higher, higher upgrade, but whenever you're doing a build like this and you want to stay cost efficient, hands down is the best yeah. way to go. And what we wanted to look for was something that was uh, self-powered to drive our coaxial speakers. It's just a four plus a sub, and this also has preamp subwoofer output so we can control this individually. So it had all the features we needed. First thing we're going to do is just tear everything down, get it all apart and see what we're faced with, get a good game plan. Basically, every time I do this, I plot out the install in my head, figure out where everything's gonna fit and what it's gonna take to make it happen and adapt along the way. All right, let's see what it's gonna take to pop this aftermarket cool gauges we got here. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at see and see what we're gonna have to do to hopefully get that bezel cut right along with it so we can slide our sleeve in. Like I said, you can see it's been modified before. Opened up the original shaft mount radio style, which you can't really get anymore unless you order a custom classic style radio. Shaft mount, huh? Shaft mount. We're also gonna take the AC vent out. Well, I'm just getting it out of the way. The more I can get out of the way, the better I can do. Now watch the bracket on the back right here. Yeah, I know, just fold up a little bit where you don't catch that. Lift mm -hmm. your side up. Come on out, shorty. Nice, here. 
You doing? Looking for a good placement? Yeah, just seeing how everything's gonna fit. I've already pre-checked and it does clear. I'm looking for ways to run, channel my wires. We're just gonna take to bolt it down, whether we use a backer and screw through to sandwich mount or if we're actually gonna go into the chassis of the truck. Personally, I like to isolate it and it doesn't put any holes in your truck. So we'll probably end up putting a small backer and locking it down there. Yeah, but aren't you having to screw the backer to the truck? Do a couple different ways. It will sandwich to keep it from sliding. It's really light, so. Yeah. Um, I have gone in and actually glued the backer to. You know, to so, the floor? Yeah. So say you're having a uh, ground loop, you know, where you're getting noise through the chassis, you can isolate by securing a non-conductor. I use like MDF or PVC. You go ahead and plug these wires in the way I already done, or you just wanna do the mounts? The mounts. Wires will be next. Can you go ahead and do the wires? Uh, I'm actually just gonna get a layout on the speaker, see what's gonna be required there, if we have to make any modifications. I see you've already got the aftermarket brackets to adapt to the six by nine. There are no holes in them, so we're gonna have to make our own mounts there. It's like y'all did a decent job to even put a, a little job? even put a little sound in. You can still hear it though. That's pretty bad. You got a little extra sound in here. I do. So they are getting everything ready to install. We pulled the dash, pulled the seat, put a placement for where the subwoofer is going to go. What's cool is where it's at. We can put another one. Like if the customer wants to, this truck's already sold. So if the customer wants to add another subwoofer, if this isn't enough, a placement of another one on the other side will be even. Underneath the seat, you can add that later. So I think that's pretty cool. Plug in another subwoofer and go. But anyways, they're working on it. I'm glad I'm not doing it because I don't like wiring. Neither does Russell. Wiring is where it's at, man. It's an art form. Robert doesn't need glasses. He's only 28. <laughs> While they're back there working on there on the uh, truck, I'm gonna go around the shop and see what I can find. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. Look at all these. These are stickers throughout the year that Robert's made and he's kind of got a wall of stickers. I believe, where is my sticker? I saw one of my stickers somewhere. I don't know where it's at, let's find it. I can't find my sticker. I swear there was some sticker, but it could have been right here. There used to be a door here. Um, they had some flooding one time. And so this has all gotten changed around, uh, added on to. But anyways, I think the sticker's gone now. This is where they've got all their vinyl and everything stored in here so they can make signs. We've got this big fancy cutting table. This thing's awesome. It like lifts up and down and I don't know what it all it does, honestly. I think it's where you, uh, oh look, they got some signs here that they're about to put on a, a Brooks plumbing vehicle. They came in earlier today and dropping it off, getting some, uh, some stickers put on it. Let's go out here. This is where all the stuff happens. Hey, look, they even have a sign. I'm supposed to come pick this up, aren't I? Yeah, uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> the new sign for Sorry, one of my stickers. keeping it safe. I'm glad y'all keeping it safe. What we got going on in here? Nathan. Nathan, are you Robert's son? Yes, sir. How long you been working up here? Uh, four years, five, three or four years now. What all you do? Uh, right now I'm managing the print shop, uh, making signs, printing out wraps. He's a pro installer too, though. He's I can a pro install. Installer? He is getting to be really good. All right. He started cool. about the same age I did. He's 18 now, so. 18? You ready to yes, like installing the subwoofers and stuff? Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy it. He's a custom builder too. He's built a lot of his Some own boxes. boxes. We might have a few. We might have one for you here soon. We can do it. Well, I mean, I've, I've built a few boxes. All right, what's your name, man? Brent. What do you do here at Ram Auto Sound? I do sales manager. Sales manager? I try to be sales manager. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's a tough job when you got to fill robber shoes. Yeah, that's, what, 30 years of experience to try to touch? I'm on a 
28. Okay, my bad. <laughs> yeah, 10 so years experience. <laughs> he only has 10 years experience of, auto, years. of uh, installing stereos and uh, making signs and stuff. So, But, yeah, it's more like 40. Yeah. It's probably 40, 50 years. He's... Easily. He's I think old. he actually installed Noah's Ark system, if I'm not mistaken. That's awesome. That's awesome. What do you put in there? I might have put in some 8-tracks. Some 8-tracks? Robert, Robert probably. has put in 8-tracks. You, you and Noah was kicking it on the boat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. So you've been working here how long? Since January. January. Cool. And also, your wife works here? Yes. She is the manager. She's oh. been here for a little over a year now. Cool, cool. And uh, y'all are actually, it's not your wife yet. Not okay. yet. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock? Tomorrow at 1 o'clock she will be. Heck yeah, that's awesome. And this is your son right here. It is. My name is Michael, and I like to play baseball. I work with my dad. I do a lot of stuff. I play with Colton, my Aunt April's little son. Yeah? Well, he's too chubby. Oh, crap. All I heard was chubby. Were you talking yeah. about me? He's talking about me. Yeah. Hey, Mike, go ahead and take that mic before it gets deep in here. All right, let me have this mic. You're gonna get in trouble on this thing, YouTube. No, I ain't. You're getting in trouble on YouTube. No, I ain't. Oh, yeah. You be spilling the beans. No, I ain't. <laughs> yeah. Tell him I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> all right, so we're missing the original brackets. A yep. lot of times I'll death these over to a four inch and we'll just make our own uh, brackets. Today we're gonna try to put these five and a quarters in. They're a little bit bigger. Quite a bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, this side's gonna be pretty straightforward. What I'm looking at is if I have to modify anything or build up or if I can get it flush enough to go under the dash bezel. And I've got to look at clearing my terminals because we don't want to short anything. This yeah. one's not going to be too bad. It's the driver's side. What is it? It's a little challenge. What if you did this? Just put it underneath. It is. We would have to space because we do not want our surround. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. You would just build a... Uh, a spacer just, bracket. A spacer bracket. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what that would be my. That I've would, looked at I'm not a choices. stereo guy. Well, but that would be the easiest on if mine. If you can see, um, and is it going to be touching anything? Exactly. So definitely an option there. We will have if we do that. We'll have protruding screws here, or we can bolt from the bottom. Yeah. So I think we're going to be okay. So we're just going to cut the hole bigger. No, we're either going to do that, or you know, like I say, I have considered that bottom mount too. Which I is like not, the bottom. Mount. Not a terrible thing, but consider that that original speaker normally set up considerably higher. Oh, it did? So... You know, We've got some room. We do have a little room. And of course, you know, the sound coming off of this is going to uh, bounce off anything it hits. So it's going to be hitting the bottom of that. Well, it's got a big old plastic... It's got a big old plastic dash it's got to go through too. This is true, but the closer we can get it to that perforation, the better we'll be. So I'm okay with either style. We'll take a look. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna yeah. come back and we'll. Uh, I think I'm gonna pre-wire everything, get all that set up, and then we'll yeah. figure out our mounts. I've got my helper Somewhere. installing the six by nines in your brackets. Probably put a little more sound dampening, maybe some polyfill in that. All right. Help the low end response. But for right now, I'm going to um, chart out all my wiring. All right. So you're using something that I'm not real familiar with. I've never seen this. <clears throat> day. What is it? This is a, like a nine conductor loomed wire. Basically, it's speaker leads and a turn on or whatever you want to use it for. But I like these because they are color coded to most aftermarket radios. Yeah. So I know where to run, what to run. So this just has all your speaker wire ran in there. And a nice clean loom. Yeah. yeah so you Absolutely. don't have to wrap everything up already. Now, in this case, with what we're doing, I'm basically using some scrap. And because I don't need four leads to everything, I'll probably strip and Tessa tape all my speaker leads to each location before we make our terminations. Oh, you're using the Tessa tape? We use Tessa tape. It's, it's, like it's like a cloth. We have a cloth which is internal and then we have another that's uh, yeah. heat resistant. So the Tessa tape, we actually use that on the underside of the, uh, in the engine bay. Mm -hmm. We use, actually, here, I'll show you. It's some right here. There's probably some, it, this is a knockoff brand of Tessa tape. And that's a cloth. Yeah, it's a knockoff brand, and then we've got some just your loom. Yeah, wire loom and everything. But we actually, do you use the name brand? I use a product uh, from Metra, which is pretty much all the same. I mean, you can buy yeah. the cheap stuff off Amazon. I bought the cheap stuff off Amazon, and I noticed it wasn't as sticky. Now they have, I believe it's Tessa tape. Mm -hmm. 
it's a certain brand we'll pop it up we'll have it in the link down below like where you can find it because it's good stuff to wrap all your wire loom and everything just it to kind of keep it it's like a what they use from the factory it is except they didn't have it then so they no didn't. they had is that just uh what is it's that? just a vinyl tape a vinyl tape that they used like back in the day yeah, so we're going to strip all this oh back. so you're going ahead and stripping it i am because i don't need everything to each location but i get my speaker leads and i get color coded cool so all right i'm gonna let him do that because again i don't like wiring love wiring you love wiring wiring is where it's at it's mm -mm, the art no. form stuff about using that uh nine wire mm -hmm. And you took it all apart. Yeah, basically because we normally use that to run from our remote amplifier, say a four channel that we want to distribute to the vehicle and not have to go to each location. A lot of these new vehicles, you can't get through the door boots and anything. So uh, if the speakers are coming directly from a factory head, we'll run that nine conductor up, do our loop, make our connections oh, there. Yeah. So nice and clean. If we have harnesses available, we won't make any cuts. Cool. And uh, distribute that from say an aftermarket amplifier throughout the vehicle today so now, today what i'm doing is just took some scrap nine conductor tore it apart because i want to make my own leads this truck wasn't pre-wired and like i said it's color coded you're taking it all apart and individually wrapping the color code Correct. coded wires so i'm making my runs from our amplifier which is built into the head unit in this case yeah to each location oh, okay and we are using the tessa tape and you asked about the brand yeah the that tessa is, that is it is tessa. tessa yeah this is the brand that i just recently bought is the tessa and i'm pretty sure i got the heat resistant kind and we do have both uh this but you don't is, need that in here this is the cloth which i use internal a couple things with it uh and you probably know if you use the heat resistant with the cloth you can tear it oh the heat, the heat resistant, resist you got to cut you have to cut it every time it's great for underneath the hood anywhere there's high heat or more abrasion yeah but this stuff makes nice clean the tessa tape also helps insulate so there's not a lot of rattling keeps all your wires clean mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is find our wire routes to each location bring them to a central and right now we're building our looms to go to the back speakers cool wrap off to something there where i can get a good stretch a little more so we're doing the wire route here come to our front right speaker i'm checking to make sure everything clears the ac vents trying to find a place to secure it and if you didn't know underneath the c10s i don't know if you can see up under here yeah i probably can't what are you what are you showing us well they have a couple of uh, little tabs here that yeah are made to bend around a wire line. be meant to for what ground so, well no we can Maybe oh, it's meant there. for running wire. Oh, it will. I thought you said ground wire. No, no. It's a binder wire. So I'm getting ready to do the main looms back for the amplifier. Oh, yeah? Signal rear speakers. Uh, like I said, that is just a little light powered sub, so we're not having to go any heavy gauge wire through the firewall. Yeah, so that's big enough. This is fine for this is what's come supplied with the amplifier. But what I'm going to do is try to get everything in one loom. I'm going to go down the the center here for the shortest runs i'm going to go ahead and put a patch cable i am going to run it along with what's a patch cable a patch cable is what provides signal from the source unit head unit oh okay into the amplifier mm -hmm. and amplifier it's all built in together it is yeah cool so subwoofer doesn't get this amplifier yeah it. so most of the time what you normally run is like a amplifier just a separate amplifier and then you run a subwoofer in a subwoofer box. But with this unit, it's simplified, it's all together. So this is something like somebody at home could do, right? DIY? I would think so. Yeah, it's I mean, a it's DIY all, setup. I just don't all, like doing wiring, yeah. so. It's all analog, there's no software to program. It'll communicate with, uh, you know, new vehicles, they have to communicate to the computer, the ECM. And yeah, especially on an older is, vehicle. This is 12 volts, you know. This wire has 12 volts all the time. This wire has 12 volts when the key comes on, and that's a ground. We are going to go ahead and check those and verify that they are functional and clean and they're going to work. Like I said, these are the originals that went to the original radio. OG? OG the wires OG. from 1984? So, 
and they haven't changed much since. They haven't. <laughs> we are going to see, these are going to go to the factory fuse distribution block. Okay. Going to look at tying in. We're going to make that work? One. Yeah, this went to the, uh, you know, somebody's already modified this and went to the cigarette lighter. Yeah, that was done. We haven't even messed with that, so. It's a good hot source, constant power for your radio, which is going to maintain all your settings and your clock. And, and uh, can definitely access that. Uh, I will look and see if there's another port for the amplifier, which is also going to be a main power. Uh, and so it will be ground, constant power, and this gets a 12 volt. Uh, when the key comes on or when the radio comes in this case we call it remote out when the radio comes on turns on the amplifier all that has to be routed to the front while I'm doing that I'm going to go ahead and run my speaker leads from the amplifier and the radio to the rear speakers normally I'd separate these if we were using a you know a high end or big four channel amp that's going to power the rest of the speakers to uh, help eliminate any kind of noise or ground loop uh, in this case subwoofer most of the noise is going to be in a higher frequency, so you're not going to hear it anyway. And it'll make for a nice clean run. Cool. Finishing out my main loom. So basically this is going to come to the amplifier. Yeah. Signals. And this is actually a, that RCA lead. And then I'm going to spin these out towards the back for each speaker. Let's separate those. Go right up to the amplifier with a nice clean loom. Yeah, everything's nice and, and make organized. Our it's way more organized than I would have done wiring it's an art form right <laughs> all right so i'm separating out my rear leads i'm just going to clip these that aren't being used out i think you got the hardest job i do <laughs> i do so i'm fixing to uh, check our power sources and grounds so i can make my terminations for the source unit yeah Get ready to run our Bluetooth mics, our radio harness. Bluetooth mic? Yeah. You say it's hands free? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all sweet. app driven. This is a nice little radio. All right, cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, this is all the stuff that plugs into the uh, actual stereo itself? It is. Uh -huh. So, we'll be using most everything on this. Uh, we're not using a camera, so we don't have to tie into reverse. Oh, but you could put in a reverse camera? Sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to turn on our amplifier. These are our leads for our coaxial speakers. And this will tie into the emergency brake. So first, I'm just going to... What's the need to the emergency brake for? Generally, it's used for safety. So you can only do certain things while you're uh, stopped. Man, safety parked. third. Put that just to a gram. We can bypass this. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go in and check this OEM wiring. Make sure everything is working it's off this is the original lead that should be constant all the time and it is hot on here i'm gonna go ahead and check your cigarette lighter it's hot i'm gonna extend this lead over and see somebody's tied in right there what should you use that for this is going to power constant power to the radio considering using it for the amplifier since this truck is Really, I'm probably only using this lead for your cigarette lighter, the original radio, which we're replacing. Uh, I know my radio and my amplifier is going to require about 20 amp draw. So we'll look and see what the original fuse is when we upgrade that. So we know that's hot. Now we're going to check the switched and ground. We'll cut this old stuff off. So now I can check my ground and switched. And we'll go key on. Oops. have a good 12 volts keyed on and a good ground. A little cheap. Normally I use a heat shrink gun. But. <laughs> so basically you just get all your wires ran to a central location and then bundle them up into a bundle. So it's nice and neat. Kind of the gist of it. But you have to have a good game plan. Yeah. So uh, I've already routed everything. I know where everything's going. I know what connections I need to make. So I'll get them there and I do the wire magic. Make everything nice and neat. Secure. It looks good. Yeah, it looks better than what I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, I would have just had speaker wires ran from here to here, speaker wires from there. Now watching this, 
I know how to do it, Robert. Oh. I know how to do it the professional way. I'm for sale. <laughs> We're gonna do it. The, we can do it the Robert way from now on. What you doing now, Robert? All right. So we've got our main harness built. We're going to uh, basically route and secure it back to our amplifier. Oh. And I've already got my leads. All right. I'm gonna distribute those to the speakers. This goes over here. That one goes over there. Dude, so we're like, you're pretty much on the home stretch. Um, besides a couple little things. Well, we've still got to mount the speakers, test everything. I'll probably do my main harness and then do a little preliminary test. Make yeah. sure everything's working before we start assembling. All right, cool. Uh, let's do it. Let's see here. Got our subwoofer. All right, we want to know where it's going to plug in and mount. Dude, that thing's so small. It is. It's perfect. So I'm ready to hear what it sounds like. I mean, it's not going to be like crazy sounding, but it's going to give a little thump. So we're going to get some access here. So we're going to get our line punch through. And what we want to do is secure this where... You going to like tape it down or... Oh, uh, we'll actually cable tie it. Mm. I want to make sure it's... Out of the way of everything. We're moving parts. Away from the accelerator. <laughs> I think I'll come in about that. There looks good. These are actually still going under the carpet in the back. Russell uh, shows up. Russell. Oh, hey, Russell. Oh, heck yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The greatest tacos from uh, Jack in the Box. I don't ever eat Jack in the Box. I, I just had a hand for it. <laughs> I see you brought enough for all of us. Your son asked you if you wanted food earlier and you said no. I'm not hungry. I'm gonna miss you, Krusty. Are you really? I am really. Yeah, this is an awesome truck. It is an awesome truck. I'm gonna miss Krusty, just like Russell's gonna miss Krusty. But I'm gonna miss Krusty nice too. It does look nice. It looks so nice underneath here. It looks like that engine's supposed to be there. It kinda looks factory. Nathan, could you hand me that radio, please? Uh oh, head unit's going in? Preliminary. The head unit's been in there. Robert's the head unit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm assuming you have a FM. You know what, you know what happens when you assume? That makes an ass out of you at least. <laughs> what you looking did, for, Robert? You, you look lost. Did put this antenna on? Yeah, we put that custom antenna. And that where, was one that we really, uh, you know. where is the other end of it? We really don't need the antenna. Probably still in the fender? Yeah, it's probably in the fender. Mm. Do you really? I don't need it. You don't need it. I don't use the radio. Does anybody use a radio anymore? Can you name a radio station? 97.7 something. When's the last time you listened to it? Dude, the last time I listened to the radio was a long time ago. It's only if I'm in a vehicle that doesn't have a sound, like a, uh, a system, a Bluetooth, a Bluetooth or anything like that, then I'll use the radio. So it's like last ditch effort. Are you testing it out, Robert? Fixing to. We're going to... Uh... This is exactly how you're going to leave it. We're just going to stick it in there. No mounts, no nothing. It'll just vibrate right into place. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. No, we're just testing it out, making sure it works. Now remember, we gotta listen to copyright free music. That's right. All right. So I've downloaded the Pioneer Smart Sync. Smart Sync. Smart Sync app. So now we're connected right. There it is. Okay, so it showed up. Click on it. Bluetooth pairing request. And the numbers are the same, yes. Allow your favorite, your contacts don't allow. You don't want to put your contacts? Okay, so it's connected. Now we're set. We're all hooked up. So where do we go now? Uh, you'll go into your app or whatever. Or can I go to uh, Epidemic whatever, Sound? Whatever you're trying to play. Easy, easy. I'm just testing. Oh. Nothing's adjusted. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more sound damping. Tell you that is back there. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna put a little more true mat. I've already cleaned and prepped everything. We're gonna do that. We're gonna secure the brackets. We're gonna put in a little polyfill to help the response of that speaker. Okay. And then I'm gonna put it all together and put the grill on. Sweet. Let's see how. We're that definitely goes. in the final steps. Uh huh. I'm just saying we're in the final steps of uh, completion. Eh, we still got a little ways, but we're getting there. What you doing? Getting patterns for window tent on a truck. That well, do, they do window tent here too. Is that We're actually in the tent bay and we're taking a precious area. 
because y'all need to tent something, right? Yeah, with the tent guys out on a job right now. So oh, okay, so he's in. out doing a tent yeah. job? Like, y'all go out and do tent jobs with other places? Uh, yeah, out at a gas station right now, he's tenting windows. Oh, okay, or like a building. Mm -hmm. Strip, like a strip center or something? Yes. Okay, that's cool. We're testing to make sure this thing fits. We'll come over here. Something like that. Gonna work? I think so. I think that bow's in your cover. Yeah. We're good with that one. Let's see how much clearance we got on that other one. Not much. Well, we're either gonna bottom mount it, but really, it, the tighter it sits up there, you the better. You my screw here. Yeah. It came out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did tell him. What I was, was like, it? Russell, don't put a screw under here. What? Because that sucker don't want to stay. Uh-huh. Oh, Two the- old clips. Uh-huh. Oh, you did put a screw? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you put a screw. He was saying something about screws holding the dash on. I was like, no, it's just I clips. Robert. I was like, it's yeah. just clips. <laughs> There you go. What are you doing, making the hole bigger? Adjusting as you go, slight modification. Sometimes you gotta make the hole bigger. <laughs> <laughs> are you putting all five and a quarter inches in there? Uh -huh. That's about the average length, Robert. You're just average. <laughs> yeah, all right. I think that's gonna clear damn close. Putting the biggest speakers possible in the dash. We should've just put six by nines in there, Robert. Uh, I could've. We could put six by nines in the doors. No, we just need to put them in the dash. Why do these lights die so fast? Me and Robert, we have the so same bright. lights, these Craftsman lights, and they die so Craftsman, fast. Craftsman, hook us up with some extended length batteries. Extended length batteries, I think this battery should power this light for, a lot. it's LED. But it's got a whole bunch of them. It does have a whole bunch of them. And it is bright. All right. What's the point of low? You don't want light. Yeah, light. there's no need low. I don't want to hear that, Chase. You what? You suggested me use the low so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I no, have because know. the but because no, why no. makes the battery last longer, <laughs> but it doesn't do as good. I mean, like, look, what are you doing with that? I can't see. Should I just turn that back? Can't on? see. It's like you turned it off. There's no light in there. No. On low. You know, see, it's the same thing. Like when I turned it off, it was the same. They promote these on Facebook. Look at this crazy thing. <laughs> this thing lights up. Like when you oh. watch this. Woo, woo. <laughs> if you put that over your eyes, you look like a guy in Star Trek. Hey, right. not a bad idea. <laughs> Wait, isn't that like uh, X Men or something? No, that's you're thinking of Cyclops. I don't know what I'm, I'm talking, talking about. The Reading Rainbow guy. The Reading Rainbow guy. Is yeah. That the same guy. The more you know. Is it the same I guy? I don't know. You don't know what we're talking about. Mm -mm. The black guy. That it's, it's like the more you know, and it's the the thing comes it's across. In a book. Yeah. Just take a look. Like. Take a look. It's in a book. A Reading Rainbow. Old school Saturday morning reading stuff. Rainbow. He's the same guy on Star Trek. Oh, I got you. I don't watch Star Trek. I, it, I, I, I don't know. I just assume. Sorry, Star Trek. I found a screw. Here we go. We're just putting this. This is the screw I'm putting in. Don't you dare. You know, I don't, I don't need that screw there. I still got to cut stuff. I need a screw. That ain't the I, screws. Where are the screws that go in this? Over here in the first track. Oh, okay. You know what he's doing? Yeah, he's marking the back of that so he can cut it out for the deck. You about to cut a hole? This Robert, the Chase's corner is not up. Oh, yeah, my corner's not up, buddy. <laughs> Oh, Supervisor. That's what I said. I needed a dang screw to put in there. No, well, you're just supposed to sit there for the mark. Oh, man. All righty. That'll give us a good start. That'll give us a, a reference. Reference. What are you doing right now, Robert? Let's see, we're going to try to get this to line up pretty close to here when it's installed. So I'm just going to get me a little hole to start with, to get the bezel back on where I can see through. Ah, uh, OK. But under there marking, it shows me where to start. You better start cutting. Dangerous way to cut, right? right yeah, you better, right, yeah, you're about to cut your dang wiener off. That's ah! <laughs> gonna take more than this. You <laughs> probably <laughs> not. <laughs> what are you doing, Robert? Still guessing. You're guessing? Well, somebody originally modified behind this dash. And since y'all got this new cluster, which I don't is, even know. Which is sweet, by the way. Yeah, I had auto meter and vision dash All right. for the C10s. Those are the best. So I'm trying to get a good line to start with so I can get my sleeve. And they are 
nice. I will say they could have gave me a touch They could have gave a little room. bit more room. Touch more room. But we're going to make it work. I've cut a lot of these. I think we're getting pretty close. Okay. What time did we get started? Probably like 10 Maybe and 10. it's... What time is it? Almost 5. Not quite. 4.30. We're going to get done before 5? We're just, we're just going to be one of those, uh, we stay after a little bit to get this Maybe thing going. a little just to play around, but I mean, we're, oh, okay. we're pretty much done. Just got to... Oh, what the is is that? Quack, quack. Uh, hi. You never know what the heck you're going to see around here. I pay this guy per hour. You pay him per hour and he's walking around and he better be standing out by the road. I was thinking. <laughs> Ram Jim. Providing your same Hold on, there we go. I've had people stand out in front of the road in uh, costumes and wave people down. Let's get this guy to do that. We're chasing him down. <laughs> what is this? Robert said he pays you by the hour. He says you need to be working out there, standing by the road. All right, well, y'all are a sign shop. You can get a sign. Yeah, you gotta speed it, man. You gotta earn your key, man. Are we at the home stretch? Absolutely. We're almost done? Almost Wait, together. I'm gonna rephrase that. Are you almost done? Because <laughs> <laughs> you've been working hard. I have. You it's haven't. all going back together. Pretty much put it all back in, plug it in, recheck everything, and tune it. And tune it? Put We're the seat back in. Heck yeah, buddy. It's like 30 minutes? Yeah, this, <laughs> this install only took 30 minutes. That's how easy it is. We're gonna uh you are full of, of crap. It Liar. took it took a little bit. It took all day. Yeah, it took all day. It did take all day. I mean we had modifications. We had to build a harness. Basically yeah. started from scratch. But it looks good. It's clean. And it sounds good. That's what that's what counts. Looks right. good, sounds good. It's all good, buddy. Back in. The subwoofer is so tiny. Perfect size for the C10s. What do you think, Russell? You think that's a pretty good subwoofer for the C10s? You like it? Thumbs up? Now that you're close to me. Now that you're close to me? Yeah, I don't have a mic. That's oh. why I was like giving you the thumbs up. Here we go. What do you think about this uh, C10 subwoofer setup we've got going on? I'm ready to hear it with the seat in it. Oh yeah, that's gonna make a difference. I'm just ready to hear it all together. It's almost done. It's almost done. It's almost done. This is what happens when it's like past five o'clock and everybody's ready to roll out. Now they all helping, Robert. Everybody's helping. Where'd they come from, Robert? I didn't even know this many people worked here. Golly. <laughs> Look at this. Funny how that works, huh? Everybody's over here working on this damn truck. We've been here, we've been here all day. I've been supervising. So is everybody else. Where you been? You came, you came in fresh. You, you came in early, Brett. You were like acting like you were gonna work on this thing. There's a lot of customers up front today. Is that what happened, customers? Can I have a drill? No. <laughs> he said absolutely not. I ain't even gonna lie. At the end of the day, when the daily uh, challenge is falling behind, we all get in and help. Damn, cuz. Did he just call you mentally challenged? Huh? <laughs> oh dude that's pretty cool it actually just the only thing is is it covers up your air conditioner but ac radio you don't need all that <laughs> you drive fast enough you'll get AC. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna slide right out you get the gas that suckers are falling out
What do you think about that system, that little subwoofer? Is, that, is this your first time installing it? Yeah. Yeah, that was actually my first one of those in there. Oh, yeah. And, and then, I came out of retirement to this. Yeah, so Robert normally doesn't do installs. <laughs> so um, if uh, he came out of retirement yeah. to do this install for us on Krusty. Thank you, Robert. Uh, had to go rescue from the old folks home. <laughs> <laughs> He's only 28, remember? His walker's right down here. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to need it tonight after crawling around in this truck. We knocked it out. We you did knock it, it you out. You knocked it out. High five. Heck yeah. yeah. You did a good job. I had a good time. But if y'all need any stereo or signs, banners, tent, what else y'all do? Anything you want to post? T-shirts. Anything. No, he don't really do t-shirts no, anymore. Hey, Doug, he can do t-shirts. Robert can do whatever the heck you want. You, Car audio, they installed, audio. What'd you say? Car marine, audio, marine car audio? audio? Marine audio. Lighting. Lighting. Any they do it all. I mean, they were installing... Uh, Cameras, RVs. You name it. <laughs> whatever you need, they got you covered here in Palestine, Texas. But anyways, we appreciate Robert and Ram Jams. Everybody works here for installing this uh, stereo. And I'm sure the next owner is going to be happy with it. I hope so. Yep. All right, Ram guys. Jams, do you? Uh, Ram Jams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to see y'all on the next one. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Hey, Holla. remember do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. That's right. See ya.